Hello, Facebook friends and revolutionaries. It's Jill Stein, Green Party candidate uh, in the past election, coming to you on Thanksgiving Eve. And I'm very delighted to have with us tonight uh, Bob Fetrakis, um, who is a election integrity um, activist, expert, attorney, sort of wears all hats for all things democracy and has been an incredible um, supporter and proponent for uh, taking back the promise of democracy and especially taking back the way that we vote. And I don't know if you've heard yet, but we have really exciting news today that we have launched a, um, uh, a campaign to uh, basically recount our votes in the state of Wisconsin, and then next week we will be doing the same in Michigan and in Pennsylvania. And um, as you probably know, we have a right to a vote. We have a right to a vote that we can rely on. In this election, uh, we've been sort of, uh, we've seen hacking all over the place. It's kind of a, um, a hacked election. The databases for voters, uh, databases for political parties, private emails. We've seen a lot of hacking. And it happens that we have very hack-friendly um, uh, voting equipment, which really invites hacking into it and has been proven to be extremely vulnerable to hacking. Um, and uh, you know, in addition, there have been some questions raised about uh, voting irregularities. So uh, we've launched this campaign today, and uh, it turns out if you wanna if you wanna confirm your votes, you have to pay a whole lot of money to this political system uh, that is basically run on privatized voting machines. We have to pay a million dollars just to get our vote verified in the state of Wisconsin alone. We'll have to pay another. Uh, three million or so in order to file in these three states and then additional um, uh, resources for the attorney fees. But, you know, we feel like um, this is really critical. If we can't stand up and demand an accurate and verified vote now in the middle of a hacked election with hackable voting machines, when exactly are we going to stand up? And of course, let me just add right here at the outset, this is not the only problem in this election. There's problems with uh, voter rolls that have been stripped, with, um, uh, with voter ID laws that prevent people, particularly people of color, from uh, being able to vote. Uh, the money that controls our electoral system, the ballot access laws that keep true um, opponents and uh, dissidents off the ballot and out of the discussion, our debate system, which makes a mockery of democracy and uh, excludes opposition voices. And finally, I'll mention our, uh, <clears throat> our election system, which uh, sort of asks you to vote your fears rather than your values. And once again, we've seen that the politics of fear has delivered in this election everything we were afraid of. This election, which of course had two uh, candidates who were the most disliked and distrusted ever. So with all of that, you know, coming out of this very bitter and um, toxic election, it's so exciting right now to be able to stand up and do something positive. We're thinking of this as a Thanksgiving gift that we are giving to each other to step forward ordinary citizens uh, to be able to stand up and demand a recount in these three states uh, to be able to, you know, find out, is our vote reliable in this election? Uh, we deserve uh, a voting system that we can trust, and uh, we, you know, we deserve a voting system we can believe in. So I encourage you to share this, um, this conversation and to like this conversation also to send us your questions and your thoughts. 
Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to call them up. I'm not seeing them quite yet, but I'm hoping we will be able to receive your your comments uh, and your and your questions. So do send them in, and please let's get the word out far and wide, uh, so that everybody knows that we have this incredible historic opportunity to stand up and demand a voting system that's working for us, not for the uh, voting machine companies who are doing very well, thank you, uh, while our votes are put at jeopardy. So with that, I want to turn things over and open this up to uh, Bob Fetrakis, who is there in the state of Ohio and has been leading the charge for, uh, you know, the kinds of reliable voting and elections that we deserve. So, Bob, let me just throw a couple of questions at you. Um, to start with, you know, what would you say your greatest concern is uh, coming out of this election? You know, what's your greatest concern um, about our votes and what we can and can't rely on giving the voting system that we have? Well, um, let's begin uh, with the obvious. Uh, I know you attended a press conference in 2012 uh, and raised the issue when, uh, when my newspaper, the Columbus Free Press and freepress.org reported that uh, friends of Mitt Romney uh, had bought Hard Inner Civic, the third largest uh, voting machine uh, company. You were the only candidate uh, that uh, took offense to that. So. Uh, the Green Party uh, is concerned, as am I, uh, as Green Party co-chair and member of your shadow cabinet as your federal elections commissioner, uh, that we allow private, partisan, for-profit companies to secretly not only count our vote, but register our voters, contain the databases, and do the central tabulations as well uh, as the election night reporting with secret proprietary software. That's right, the courts have ruled that the software is secret, not open source, and it belongs to these private for-profit partisan corporations. So that's a, that's a huge concern, as you well know. Yes, and in the in the states where we're bringing this uh, this recount, where we're calling for a recount, um, you know, what what can we see? You know, what can we do with a recount? What can we find out that will give us useful information? Can you talk a little bit about you know what are we recounting? What are we going to look for in the voting machines where we don't even have a paper trail in the state of Pennsylvania? Yeah, Most of the voting machines uh, don't have a paper trail, even. How do yeah, we find out, you know, yeah, whether our votes are reliable? Are as, yeah, uh, estimates are as high as 80% uh, of the machines in Pennsylvania uh, are DREs, direct recording electronic devices, that don't have proper paper trails. Uh, but what we do know and what is indicated uh, hopefully, we can get forensic experts in there uh, to take a look at the audit logs uh, of the machines. I hope we can insist upon that. But uh, the main thing that concerns us, and I know concerns you and the Green Party, uh, was the fact that in about 10 of these elections, mostly in battleground states, had they occurred outside the United States, uh, they would have not have been certified by the U.S. State Department or the Agency on International Development uh, as free and fair because of the conflict between the exit polls, what voters said, uh, told exit pollsters how they voted, and the actual vote count. So again, uh, the vote count shows Hillary Clinton winning by uh, four points in Wisconsin. Instead, she loses by one, usually a shift of five percentage points uh, or so like that indicates a uh, cause for investigation. So you're doing with the Green Party 
what the U.S. government would do overseas. Uh, we've never applied the same standards to our elections that we do to foreign elections. So uh, we're going to get in there in, in places, particularly in Wisconsin, and take a look at uh, why some of those small towns had turnouts over 100 percent and why 80 of them had supposed turnouts of more than 90 percent. So there seems to be an inflated vote count in parts of uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and this was a pattern that we saw in 2004 uh, in Ohio. And it may be an indication that somebody has hacked into the central tabulators or in other ways uh, been involved with programming uh, at the precinct level uh, as well. So we've got some very clear ideas uh, of what we're looking for in places like Wisconsin. Uh, for our Facebook friends out there, you may notice that uh, I'm in the car. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving Eve, and um, I'm here with my, my son, Noah, who's driving, and Ben I know. is in the back seat sleeping. Um, and uh, we're heading to Maine. Um, so, you know, hopefully we're going to keep signal here. Uh, good so far. Um, I wanted to just make a quick comment about uh, these voting machines in Wisconsin where um, they're using a type of electronic voting machine with touch screen things that has actually been uh, barred from the state of California because they are so prone to hacking. And if I got the story right, they have a little button on the back, if I have this correct, <laughs> Um, they have a little button on the back that enables somebody to vote many times. Uh, it enables someone to double, triple, quadruple, whatever, um, magnify their vote many times. Now, everyday people wouldn't know about this, but, you know, uh, a, uh, an, a, a, somebody who's out to, um, you know, to sort of uh, take advantage of the vulnerabilities uh, might potentially know how to do that. So. Some of these machines are in use in Wisconsin. It's really pretty staggering that um, you know a, a vulnerable voting machine uh, is still in use. And in fact, that's true for so many of them that they've been shown in the lab. You can reverse engineer them. Um, it can be programmed, but then to um, transfer votes and um, you know, or to blank out certain votes, uh, they're very subject to tampering. So it's really quite astounding that they're still being used. I'm going to read a couple comments here. Um, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Hay Haycock is asking, why not check California? Uh, Bob, do you want to give us a response, uh, just a quick response on some of these? Well, uh, California is actually still being checked from the uh, uh, primary uh, they do seem to have a tremendous amount of votes uh, that remain uh, uncounted. Uh, so far, uh, that state at least seemed to go the way it was indicated. Uh, but uh, some of your uh, watchers and listeners may recall that there was tremendous problems in the primary, uh, particularly in terms of the assignment of Sanders voters uh, to no party preference and to minor parties. Uh, so uh, I think the votes there, uh, while they may be off in some states, is they don't have the same uh, triggers with the margin of errors that you're seeing in these key battleground states like Michigan uh, and Wisconsin. So uh, if we had unlimited money, uh, I would say let's go after California. But right now, uh, we're looking at the 24 out of 28 states initially where there was a shift towards Trump that was unexplained. And out of that 24, we're looking at three key states uh, which should have went the other way. I mean, a better state to recount would probably be Ohio. Uh, the vote was supposed to be 47% for Clinton 47.1 for Trump, uh, and Trump ended up with a, uh, again, picking up 
a unexpected 8.5%, uh, which is something that statistically does not naturally occur. It's like he hit the super lotto that night uh, in about 10 different states. But Ohio's numbers are incredibly skewed to the point of being statistically implausible. So can you explain why it is that the election experts suggested, you know, doing these other states but not doing Ohio? Um, is it just because it's, you know, it's harder to do or the election laws don't allow it? Um, or is it for lack of resources that we're not also going into Ohio? Well, I think Ohio was a uh, toss-up state. Trump was supposed to win by one-tenth of one percent. Uh, so, uh, and he ended up winning by 8.5 percent. So it's one of the more implausible states, wow. and it's also one of the more uh, historically uh, corrupt. I, I, I lived there, and it had problems in virtually uh, every election except 2008. State. So the other states, I think we're looking at them in part because it was clear in the exit polls and even in the tracking polls that Clinton was supposed to win those states, particularly Wisconsin and Michigan. Uh, and the shift is so sudden and so unexpected and so at odds to what people were telling exit pollsters in scientific surveys that they become the obvious uh, target because uh, they shifted electoral votes uh, in a way that uh, is mathematically improbable. Thank you. Um, and I just want to let people know we have about a thousand people who are watching right now. So uh, thank you for tuning in, especially on this Thanksgiving evening. And uh, be sure to share and, uh, and to like this and to send us your comments. Um, it's really important that we get the word out that we're standing up, that we do not consent to uh, elections that are, and to uh, voting uh, infrastructure that's subject to being hijacked and which is privatized from the get-go and for which we have to come up with a million dollars just to, just to assure us that our votes haven't been hacked or stolen or programmed out from under us. Uh, this is really an incredible outrage and I think it's so exciting that this uh, opportunity has fallen into our laps that we can actually stand up and challenge this. And I want to thank you because it's everybody out there who's making this possible. We are crowdsourcing this. We went uh, online to start funding this and if you'd like to help contribute five dollars or five hundred dollars whatever you can afford, you can throw that uh, in to that pot at our website, jill2016.com slash recount. And that will ensure that your money goes into this dedicated fund uh, to pay the, the fees for filing and legal fees uh, and the public relations and the whole thing and, and the technical experts we will likely be in court as well as conducting a recount, which will be a very exciting um, participatory movement in these three states. So, um, you know, join the team here. We are doing this uh, in this era of uh, Donald Trump. We're fighting back um, to say that we're not going to be just passive observers. Uh, we do not consent to a democracy that can be bought or hacked out from under us. Uh, we're standing up to demand the kind of democracy and the kind of world that we deserve and that works for all of us. And again, like this, share this, uh, send it out, and go to jill2016.com slash recount, and you can be a part of the effort. We have to raise over two and a half. By Friday at noon, we have to raise two and a half million dollars. Uh, I don't have the latest count, but we were approaching the halfway point, which is great. If we can keep up that pace, uh, we will have the money in time to be able to 
get it into the Wisconsin um, election authorities so that we can get this filing done on Friday afternoon in time to actually make it happen. Um, let me just check in on a couple other comments. I don't know, Bob, if you're in a place where you can see the comments. I can only see a few of them, perhaps because I'm moving here in the car. Um, so here's one that says, this is from Carl uh, Nosen Johnson, who says the U.S. government has a big problem uh, that uh, he's saying that thoughtful people in this country, people with integrity, are being turned off by this system, uh, and that people who can pay the price wind up going into the system. And and I'll just give a quick comment, and then I'll um, turn it over to you, Bob. But one thing I want to say is, before I got, you know, kind of before I discovered the Green Party, I thought that was all there was with these sort of political systems that are run by big money, where you have to play with big money. Uh, in order to be heard, in order to uh, have a voice, and that uh, that's all that politics was about. And then I discovered the Green Party, which doesn't take money from lobbyists, from corporations, uh, from super PACs, from predatory banks, from the fossil fuel giants or the war profiteers. We are a party of, by, and for the people. And, uh, you know, we are for people like you who've had it with being thrown under the bus and had it with a political system that is in bed with with the predators. And it's at times like this that we can stand up and show that we got the numbers, we got the power, uh, we got the solutions, and we can make it so. A lot of people think of this era of Donald Trump as, oh God, you know, we gotta give up. But in fact, you wanna think back to the era of Richard Nixon, one of the most corrupt and oppressive presidents out there, we accomplished great things, in part because we realized that our lives were on the line with the military draft. So we got out there and we uh, demonstrated, we picketed, we sat in, uh, we made it clear that uh, we the people were in charge. We brought the troops home from Vietnam. We got the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, uh, the EPA, workers' uh, protections in the workplace under OSHA and women's right to choose under a very Supreme Court, uh, a very conservative Supreme Court, by standing up and demanding what we deserve. So that's what we're doing right now um, in, this, uh, in this recount effort. It's also what we did just a couple weeks ago by defeating the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trump might, might try to take credit for that, but the credit belongs to people like you and me who've stood up as a grassroots movement for five years and fought this back. and. Uh, delayed it into an election year where we forced uh, politicians to take a stand against it. So this is the time for us to stand up and uh, Carl Johnson, check out the Green Party and uh, find that there's a whole new way forward there uh, that is all about the politics of integrity and an America and a world that works for all of us. I'm going to turn that over to you, Bob. Um, you know, how do you see this as, you know, again, integrity in our elections? How are we standing up here uh, to fight back, um, and how do you see this rolling out in the, um, you know, in the uh, recount fights that we have coming up? Well, uh, I think uh, just like we've won the cultural wars on uh, uh, diversity and uh, gay marriage and uh, not going after people for. Uh, having a drug addiction or smoking small amounts of marijuana. Uh, I think we've won the integrity war. This is the big battle to show down uh, right now is that virtually every uh, newspaper, uh, including some aggressive ones that you know, wouldn't publish my stuff and Harvey Wasserman stuff, Harvey's popular stuff, everyone now agrees uh, we're in agreement that these machines are eminently hackable, that uh, we should have had them secured. Uh, think about this. Homeland Security did not include the election apparatus of the United States, the machines, the uh, internet transfers, the central uh, tabulators uh, as crucial infrastructure. So not only do we use private machines, 
uh, with secret software uh, is we don't protect our system from outside nations and from the private corporations who have the keys to the kingdom. And some of these have interlocking directorships, uh, like Seidel SLB with Alan Hamilton, with the Carlisle Group. Uh, and I think this is the battle, uh, the recount here. Uh, we all know now that our system is broken, it's eminently hackable, and it's all interrelated uh, from the non-competitive uh, you know, Congress where 90% of the seats are gerrymandered uh, to the unlimited private corporate money. Uh, I think what you're doing is, is tipping the scales in that future historians will record, particularly with the response you're getting uh, from people, the small money you're raising, that this was the opening battle to reclaim democracy. And it needs to be done because the University of Harvard, uh, Harvard University and the University of Australia at Sydney said of the 47 long-term democracies, the U.S. is dead last at 47 out of 47. Wow. And thank you. And I, I really want to give a shout out uh, to you, Bob, for being one of the real pioneers uh, in election integrity and one of the first people uh, you and you know and others out there uh, in the election integrity movement who've done such an amazing job. You have Bob have really helped lead the way along with Harvey uh, and others. But uh, you know I think we owe you an incredible debt of gratitude for really uh, reading what this was about, and you've been completely, you know, uh, exonerated and uh, you know recognized as uh, right all along, right uh, years in advance. Um, and really put this this incredibly important issue uh, on the map for us. So we really owe you an incredible, um, you know, shout out of thanks. And again, I want to make the point that uh, for everybody out there, we are the ones who are standing up on this. This is a small donor campaign. These donations are coming in uh, almost entirely through our website, uh, and they're coming in as regular uh, donations particularly small donor donations um, so you know join it be a part of it again share this message I want you to know that there are over 250,000 people now that have been reached uh, in this discussion so keep sharing um, we will keep spreading the word and mobilizing people to get up and give this uh, gift on Thanksgiving Day, this gift that we are all giving to each other of being the democracy that we deserve. Jeff Henry says he just donated $100. Thank you so much, Jeff. He says, let's uncover the truth. Um, somebody else says, uh, Lena says, my son is driving. Yes, my son is driving. Um, uh, let's see, somebody else says, I agree with Dr. Stein. Thank you so much, Mr. Fritakis. Uh, uh, Thetrakis, I'm sorry, for everything that you are fighting for. Um, someone else is saying this is not for Hillary. This is for ensuring election integrity. That's right. Um, uh, both Bob and I can attest that throughout the election, you know, we were standing up for election integrity. We were standing up for, uh, for ending these outrageous wars, the uh, exporting of our jobs. Uh, the giveaways to Wall Street, the meltdown of the climate, you know, and the democracy that we deserve. Uh, we are not here to serve one candidate or the other. We're here to stand up for um, reliable votes that we can believe that we can um, count on. We should not have to do uh, vote recounts and come up with a million dollars in order to have confidence in our vote. This is absolutely outrageous. Uh, we deserve a voting system that has built-in integrity and uh, built-in reliability. And in the course of doing this recall, or I should say this recount, you know, we are making that point that we not only deserve a reliable vote now, we deserve the changes to our voting system. And that would be uh, either uh, built-in audits that are paper audits so that there is a paper trail all the time, 
or potentially hand-counted paper ballots. And before we wrap up, maybe, Bob, you can just say a quick word about that question as to what is the gold standard here uh, as you see it. What, what kind of, obviously we need to get rid of these electronic voting machines that do not have paper records, um, but do we want to get rid of the machines altogether? How do you see that question right now? Well, the, uh, I, I think the ultimate goal is going to, like the rest of the major democracies, including England, uh, a couple things. that We need to re go back to paper and pencil and engage our population, our elderly, our high school students, our college students, and other citizens to count those votes uh, that are transparency. But in order to do that, we may have to have a transition period uh, that is of open source we need to immediately get rid of all secret proprietary partisan uh, software. And also, uh, I sued in Ohio, and I still can't believe I lost. Some of these machines have audit logs as well as ballot, uh, and the actual image scanners uh, that record the paper. But in Ohio and in other states, you're security systems. This is absolutely unacceptable in a democracy that you would turn off your audit logs and your ballot imaging uh, procedures. And uh, so I think every there's already software that is open source. Everything should be at least on paper, on the scanned ballot, uh, at a minimum, as we move towards hand ballot. Great. So the bottom line is uh, we can fix this and we can start fixing this right now and we can uh, verify our votes in this election so that, uh, and in all elections actually, we need verified votes so we can have confidence in the integrity of our system. So with that, I want to just thank everybody for tuning in. Please again like this and share this so we can continue to spread the word. Go to jill2016.com slash recount and throw whatever you can into the pot. Um, this is a very big uh, crowdsourced movement. We have incredible momentum right now and um, we're quite confident if we can keep this up, uh, we will have the resources that we need to actually ensure that we have a recount and we get a verification one way or the other that uh, the right thing happened or it did not. We need to know and we need to take steps to fix this uh, for once and for all. So again, thank you all so much for being a part of this. Thank you to Bob Petrakis for the wonderful work that you're doing. And um, thank you for making history, Jill, you and your donors. Uh, future historians will record this day. A great Thanksgiving for America tomorrow. It really is. And thanks to everyone uh, who's pitching in as small donors to show that this is what democracy looks like. This is about us standing up and taking our democracy back, or the promise of our democracy back, and actually creating that democracy, which yet has to be really uh, realized in this country and uh, in most places around the world, but especially here. So thank you all so very much for being a part of this. And uh, have a great Thanksgiving. And um, Let's keep it up. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye now.